Okay, well, we can call the meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. Evelyn, since you do the nice background, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Of course, give me one second. Let me share my screen. Oh, okay. If you're busy letting people in, you don't have to. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Robin. Present. Commissioner Marshall is currently absent. Commissioner Craig. Present. Commissioner Gassan is currently absent. He may be running late. Commissioner Fuder. Present. Vice Chairperson Soto. I'm here. And Chairperson Bernstein. Here. Yeah. Thank present. you. Okay. Do we have an acceptance of the agenda? Do we have a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. Second. Approved. Approval of the minutes from the October 20th meeting. Do we have a motion to accept? Approve? I, I do. Move. Okay. Also. But the Commissioner Futter uh, moves and Soto seconds. Public comment. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Measure J Commission on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Commission. Although the Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Three minutes are assigned for each speaker. Do we have any public comment? We do not. Okay. Now my welcome comments. So, um, I'm going to mention give, I can a few things if you give me some time and then we can discuss later. Um, but I think we've had a few meetings now where we've expressed concern with not really having a full direction from city council or a timeline as to when we'll actually get that. Um, I do know that there is a um, uh, the visioning session or is scheduled for this weekend, I think with a follow up in 10 days, uh, which is great. Um, but I'm hoping that we can get some kind of indication as to when we'll actually get direction. And I think uh, in several of the meetings that we've had and a couple of the committees I've been on, there's been um, a lot of concerns expressed by commissioners um, about our canceled meetings and about our, our lack of uh, direction from city council. I did, um, I did invite, uh, ask, uh, Councilman Coors, if he wanted to speak beforehand or was able to meet at this, come to this meeting. But I know there's three other, I think there's three other commission meetings going on at the same time. So I, I assume that's very difficult. Um, but the concern really is that it's an oversight commission. I don't think we're being allowed to do um, our job. And this is what I, I've been hearing. Um, we currently have $17 million worth of unallocated funds for the 20. 122 uh, fiscal year. Um, and my guess is that it's going to go up. We're already 30% above for the first few months. And, and um, I know from my own experience, sales are pretty strong. And I would think they'll be strong through the, uh, the rest of the year, hopefully. And, um, and I think then we'll have another 17 or so or more million to, um, to allocate for um, the 21, 22 year fiscal year, which is gonna leave us with somewhere between 35 and $40 million. And what the concern seems to be is that we're not passing projects through. Um, and I realize there's, uh, you know, engineering is, is obviously overwhelmed, but I think the public has entrusted that Measure J funds would be, sent, would be spent um, or at least allocated. Um, and uh, we have been moving forward with community projects, but again, I think there's a million dollars from last year, a million dollars from this year, and then a million dollars we'll have next year. 
Um, I know Commissioner Marshall has suggested that that be increased based on overall revenue. And um, I think that is something we should discuss whether we ask for that. Um, but um, I have, I will just mention, I did reach out personally to about 15 different area nonprofits and, and asked that all the commissions be contacted about the um, community initiated uh, Measure J grants, funds and uh, projects rather. And um, we have had a lot of people interested. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, I created a bit of confusion. I apologize to Nancy and Evelyn in that Naomi and I offered to reach out to people who had, if they had any questions. And Evelyn started arranging the meetings and I realized that wasn't overly burdensome and, and wasn't really intended, although it was appreciated. Um, so we, Naomi and I are reaching directly to some of these people, and I would encourage anyone on the commission, if there's people out there who want to know about Measure J funds, to either uh, answer questions or direct them to, to someone else who can answer. Um, and this is not, it turns out, I don't think it's just for the community initiated projects, but um, for other projects within Measure J, I think we all saw the, the dog park proposal for 1.3 million. Um, I know... Um, uh, Commissioner Marshall mentioned that Mizell has, you know, a more expensive project, and I know some others do as well. And, and I think we should encourage these, if even if they can't be within our scope of a million dollars, that they are presented to um, either the commission and or the city manager and or um, or engineering. Um, I think the idea with Measure J is to get as much input. And one of the concerns I've heard is that it has become sort of just another pot of money for city council to use. And I don't think that's the way it was intended. And I, and I think when, when really asked, they don't really um, see it as that. It's just, it's just sort of developed into, um, in, into that. So um, what, what I am gonna recommend that we do, and this is open for discussion is, um, and, and, I, and just a uh, city manager has been very clear that, you know, city council is, is overwhelmed and, and they've set up a system where everything goes through them and they just, they don't have the bandwidth um, to do it all. And, and I think our commission is, I mean, there's some extremely talented, experienced people. I know several people have been on other commissions. Commissioner Marshall was on the original Major J. Um, I know Commissioner Craig's been on that several. So we have a lot of, um, a lot of skills and input that I think can can help move this along. Um, I think several of us either have businesses or operated businesses or been in business, so understand that you know to sort of delegate or divide and conquer will get a lot more done. Um, so, what my recommendation that we can discuss as a commission as we go through, and I know we have to do the budget and the capital projects, is that we consider. Um, formally requesting to city council that they schedule the joint meetings with us. Um, it's unlikely from, I guess, the timing that there will be one before the new year. And I don't know if the idea is that we'll have one to discuss 21, 22, or they'll just do one for 21 through 23, or if we'll do them um, separate or together. Um, so I think we should request that in writing. Um, and also that we, um, that we request a meeting to, to review the five-year plan, especially, which I thought was a terrific and a lot of work. And, and I think it's unfair to engineering to basically wait a year to get that um, discussed when I think it would help significantly. Um, and I think we can move forward with, with reviewing the projects and, and determine, um, I think we may even wanna look at um, whether we, um, we, we recommend specific projects that we think can happen quickly or, or now within the 21, 22 year, and then expand more on 22, 23. Um, I'm also gonna ask, cause this has come up through the communications committee. I think we should, I, if the commission agrees that we should ask for line items um, in our budget for, for marketing and for PR. And as I understand it, the city manager can approve those if they're under 25,000. Um, so that is not something that would have to go to, to, to council. Um, but we've had issues with not getting information out to the public. And again, I know um, Amy Blaisdell is sort of operating as a one person uh, department right now. And, and 
and and she didn't have the approval to spend the money to get an outside people to help. And I think we have the budget, and I think it's very important for Measure J. Um, you know, eventually this is going to come. First of all, I think we have a responsibility to the community, and then I think eventually it will come up for a vote again. And I think we're at a point now, probably most people don't even remember the vote or what it was for um, or forgot. So um, I'm sorry to ramble, but, um, and the only last thing I would say is we continue to encourage the community to, um, to submit um, ideas and proposals through either the community projects or if they're larger ones as well. Um, so I'm sorry for hogging all that time. I don't know if anybody has any comments now or we wanna wait until the commission member comments and requests at the end after we review the Measure J update and capital projects. I'm in total agreement. <laughs> anybody else? I mean, is anybody, uh, uh, I guess what the question is, and we can discuss this later, is whether people are okay with us sort of moving, you know, moving forward not not um, in conflict to not having city council, but with the idea that the more work we can do and the more progress and the more pressure on um, that we have we have firm ideas that we could, will be act we will be able to act more immediate. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think if we keep kind of we're going through our own prioritization process of projects and kind of reviewing if there are other as city council kind of goes through their visioning um, sessions, of course we can always like modify and review kind of our own conversations and um, can put any other mitigations in place, but at least um, we're not starting from zero and we can kind of go step five, then to step three and then keep going or whatever it might be. Um, but I don't think, you know, we're not moving in, in cement here or in stone, we can always, um, make some changes until we make our final recommendations. So I think those early conversations um, make a lot of sense. Okay, Commissioner Robin. Uh, yeah, yes, I sim simply I agree. Uh, and I think we have the benefit of several meetings worth of high level consensus that the capital plan that staff engineering is and finance have put together for us has has framed a strategic plan that is without controversy among the commissioners uh, the fine tuning is a different discussion and i think that i was already set guideposts for us that allow us to propose action now as projects get much closer to being actionable or being needed by the community we have a list in front of us that gets refined and added a little bit month over month. Uh, but I think collectively we have a very good sense of where our priorities are right now. Thank you. I've got some comments, but I'll wait for comments at the end. Okay. Uh, does anybody have anything else to say before we go to the budget update? Nope. Okay, Nancy. Hi, one of the things I wanted to mention, we've discussed this at several meetings that the um, <clears throat> we weren't gonna meet as Measure J until after the visioning se session in November and December. And I think Joelle has a, a meeting date, tentative meeting date already scheduled for January, but I'll let him talk about that. Um, as far as projects though, we'll go to that as soon as we're done with this, but we, we did have the five-year plan and I think Joelle moved some of those things up from the five-year plan, but let's get to the budget. So for um, October, um, comparative year over year, this year we're at 3.4 million and last year we were at 2.6, which is a 783 increase over the prior year. And we're continuing to do well, so. Hopefully it'll stay that way. And that's, that's all I have for the finances. And, and city council did increase the measure J revenues by 1.3 million. We saw that. Um, I, I have a few questions. The, the $6 million for the um, paving for 2021, was that spent and done? It's a current active project, yes. Okay. 
My next question, just while we're here, is that if for 21 22, that 3 million were increased to 6 million, given the fact of uh, the presentation you made several months ago about you know, the, the importance of doing more sooner, can that physically be done since you have a contractor or is there uh, no point? No, so the contract that I have right now for street repair paving is $6 million worth of paving throughout the street, throughout the city. Um, the, the 3 million that we have for next year, if you increase that to 6 million, we will issue another contract for, you know, for another $6 million worth of, of projects or street paving. So yes, we would use it all and, and uh, we can use more. Does that, and just so I understand, does, I know a lot of these projects take a lot of engineering's time. If it goes from three to six million, does that take double year time to manage? The, the interesting part about street repaving um, is that it, it actually doesn't impact engineering all that much the more money you give us. We, we simply have a list that we, it's a long standing list of uh, payment condition index that rates our streets. We know what streets needs, need to get repaired. Um, we have uh, sort of money assigned to each one of those streets. And um, if you give us 6 million, we'll create a project and it's about the same level of effort as a Three million project. Um, we do hire an outside consultant construction management team that helps us manage the project. So it makes it easy for us to, to, to handle that project. So that one, that's one of the unique ones that actually doesn't increase our time. Okay. It and, doesn't take uh, longer to put together, but the effort is, is minimal, I think, compared to what the, the benefit of the actual additional $3 million. And am I correct? That's the top request from the community on city efforts. It has been for the three years that I've been here where uh, we get money uh, for a payment. Yeah. So, yeah, it is one of the, the, the big features. And, and the more we spend, the better long, long term because we invest in our infrastructure and the, it doesn't deteriorate. So, the more we pay, the more we prolong and improve the payment uh, condition of the city overall. So we hope, like, I think our report says if we continue to spend $6 million for the next, what, Don, is it five, 10 years, we'd be probably maintaining the current rating of our streets. So, um, it, it, yeah, spending more money in paving is really important, actually. Okay. So we can hold this till later when we go through the projects, but I, I think given the the funds now and that we're already a th third of the way through the year, that might be something to push for 21, 22, given that if we have $30 million worth of other projects, it would be too much to handle anyway. Um, and can I ask one more question? Is that the million dollars for community projects, none of that was spent from 21, 2021. Is that right? Nancy? Oh, no, we haven't spent any of that yet. So we have 2 million this year. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Oh, sorry. Someone have a question? All right, Commissioner Robin? Yeah, I'm mute. Trying, there we go. Trying, trying to unmute. Uh, 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 this is probably more of a request than a question. Uh, and sharing this point with Nancy and Joel, when I when I flip screens or flip pages from the the active year spend and the active year budget, I have a hard time basically keeping my fingers in the right cell, if you will of what money on Joel's list relates to this current fiscal year versus a prior fiscal year. Uh, and so without, without asking anybody to look at it right now, if you could uh, maybe have a, a, a little bit more coordination as these are refreshed uh, so that if someone who's a little less removed, a little bit more removed than you are can more clearly understand what, what which bucket of funding for a period of time is being applied. Uh, and I think if you were to flip pages as I did, it's not really that clear of where the spend is coming from, what the funding source is, 
and how it's being allocated. Yeah. Some, uh, just to try and be a little bit more helpful as an example, if you bear with me. Does that make sense again. to you, Nancy? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? My phone was ringing. Sure. So if you were, Nancy, if you were, if you were looking at uh, Joel's engineering memo. Yes. And see spending for the re revised list of projects for 2021 into 2022. And then overlay that on your, on your monthly statement, on your monthly update. Um, those were approved. If you look at um, 2021, those were those were approved in 2021, where it says completed projects. So yes. if so, if they were budgeted on my worksheet in 20 recommended budget 2021. Yes. And you're saying that they were completed in 20. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. It should be yeah. So it's 21, 22 fiscal year that they were completed. Uh, or in this case, active, in the case of shifting pages onto page three, for example. Are you talking page two of the memo? Uh, right, right now, let's go to page three, if you don't mind. I think this might be, I think this might make my point a little clearer. Okay. So uh, Joel's memo has a, maybe there's 15 projects listed mm -hmm. in that fiscal year 21 to 22 right and on nancy's list there are two projects right because remember the council hasn't approved these yet they're part of his five-year plan and he reviewed revised it from the original page two to page three that's the revised um amount that he wants to spend in 2122 yeah. yeah. and that's yeah. going to, once that goes to council if it gets approved then you will see that on the right hand corner of my um my excel sheet under uh, adopted and adjusted budget i'll list all yeah. those projects out when they get approved uh, i understood so maybe my comment is better directed to joel my my request is better directed to joel uh and maybe you've done this already but to distinguish among this longer list of projects which have been which which projects have been approved and funded and which ones have not if any right and i, I can answer that when i go through it generally yeah. none of them have been funded yet so yeah and then I don't, I don't i don't mean to I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to audit this i'm simply trying to ask for presentation purposes going forward if there's a way to uh, map this out a little bit more clearly for those of us who don't look at it every day I think we can. I think the the being in limbo and having having council uh, sort of clean clean the Measure J projects off the books, essentially zero them all out, um, makes it difficult to have that conversation with the current budget that NASI produces and the the way I was tracking the five year CIP and what I proposed to do. So it's sort of non coherent right now, but. Um, if we fast forward and council approves a certain budget for a certain amount of projects, I think my spreadsheets and uh, Nancy's spreadsheets will be in sync and will be okay, good. Because I know my, 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 for my purposes, probably no different than anyone else on the on this session. Uh, was we're we're looking at seventeen million and ninety thousand dollars of unallocated funds and trying trying to get a, a, a tighter lineup of one list versus the other so that we're not getting all excited about something that we're actually overspending. Right, right. And, and the, the, the memo I produced is really an old memo and just brought it forward for conversation sake as okay. by, by Chair Bernstein. So um, if you don't mind, I guess I can start going into it if you yeah. want. Yeah. Continue asking questions about the budget, it's fine as well. So basically what you see on my Excel schedule, what, is what has been approved by council. On Joel's, his is what hasn't been approved by council, but we're hoping to bring it to them with you guys, with the Measure J Commission, and get those projects approved, which on page two, three, will absorb most of what we have left in my budget schedule 
for 21-22. We have 17 million and he's re, um, showing you projects up to 16 million. Right, I can talk about that a little bit. And just to, just to further that point a little bit, if you see a Nancy spreadsheet, she talks about the uh, shade structures, uh, $283,000. And then the fiscal year 2021 on the completed projects is the shade structures for the park. So that's completed and done. So we've, we've already burned through the $280 mm -hmm. and built it. Uh, same goes for restrooms at Sunrise Park. Um, if you go to the completed projects, the Sunrise at Restrooms Park is completed as well. So it's sort of giving you an example of, of what it is. The other parks are still, uh, park projects are still in process. So I can go into the memo if you'd like. Yes, please. All right, well, I guess is it easier for me to share my screen or you all have access to the actual memo? I have it. I have it. I'm looking at it. it. All right. So I won't share my screen. Uh, so uh, I'll start just by saying, repeating sort of what the Commissioner Bernstein's email stated or requested of, of staff. One was he, we were asked to. Uh, talk about the projects that were, have recently been completed or that projects are currently underway. Uh, the second request was to talk about projects that were previously approved, but put on hold pending the council vision session. So that's sort of what I was trying, I'll try to relay in uh, further down in the memo. And the third request was to talk about the five-year CIP and any other projects not been approved. Um, so interesting, interestingly enough, uh, the convention center staff uh, reached out and they had certain projects that wanted a measure J to fund. So when I was putting this memo together, they actually sent me the project sheets, the request sheets, and they described five small projects that they wanted funded using measure J fund. So I included them in the memo just for conversation sake. And uh, when we take all our measure J uh, group projects from the commission to the council, I would probably be including those uh, projects as well. So to get funded. Can I ask just for a second? Um, yeah, please interrupt and ask questions. It's easier. Okay. Really on the uh, <laughs> convention center, I know that um, um, Rob Hampton, who's in charge of the convention center and the Bureau of Tourism is also in charge of the visitor center. And the visitor center, at not the Wellwood, but the one at the north end of the tramway is in need of work and both I think exterior, there's a, it's a class one of Stark building. So I think it's painting and minor things with the restrooms. And I, and I know interior, it, it needs an update. It's a, it's a revenue source for the Bureau of Tourism. Um, but they are not city, they're contracted with the city. So by definition, they have to go through, um, I think the city manager. Can we ask, invite them to submit um, if there is in something they need for the visitor center, I know the Wellwood was done, but not the one uptown, up North Palm Spring. Right. So the visitor center building is a city owned facility, correct? Yes. So they can reach out to engineering and similar to what the convention, convention center did, fill out a worksheet, and eventually it'll get included into the request for Measure J. It, it does, it's not necessarily one of the small, it's not a community project, it's an actual facility that needs renovation that's owned by the city. So they can reach out to us and I'll provide the same information I did uh, to the convention okay. center. It's the, same, it's the same person. So if it would be appropriate if I, said, uh, if I suggested that he submit it to engineering or the city manager. Right. If they've already been, if they understand the process, I think that okay. would be easy for me to include it. And that's sort okay. of what I, I intend to do with most of the other departments. I have already reached out and asked whoever has new projects to fill out these sheets so that we can, you know, bring it back to Manager J and so that the, we stay consistent, the format's consistent and, and the, the commissioners are able to understand what we're trying to, to bring forward with projects. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you. Joel, I had a question around the completed projects on the sure. memo at the top. Um, the shade structures at the park, um, what was, was that, always originally only intended for the tennis and the pickleball courts like or is there another phase where playgrounds are going to be shaded or um because they're beautiful but they're not necessarily in multiple areas around the park so i was just curious as to how that decision making was done was it, I, I think was, that was it always projects, for there 
Yeah, Don could correct yeah. me, but I think the, so, the Parks Commission brought those projects forward and specifically identified the location where they wanted the shade structures. And so, so what happened was the Parks Commission or Parks and Rec Commission asked for shade structures just in general. Um, Measure J and the, through the budget process, we gave them a budget dollar amount. And then um, after we got the bids, we basically built as many shade structures as we could for the approved budget. Um, there are, I, I am aware of another project that Cynthia, the former director of Parks and Rec, um, she submitted a grant application um, for some shade structures at the Aquatic Center, as well as Desert Highland Park. Um, the original project was um, focused around the ball fields, pickleball, and tennis courts. So, you know, it, it had been included one at um, the baseball field at the corner of, um, what is that street? Right, right next to the stadium, that other ball field um, by the Sunrise Park entrance. So um, there are more shade structures to be built around different facilities. Um, separately attending the Parks and Rec Commission. I know there was interest in those giant shade structures that cover playground equipment that some of the other cities have. Um, obviously that's a lot bigger scope, size and scope, but um, I am familiar that that wasn't the, you know, they just built as much as they could given the budget that they were given. Yeah, I guess what you're saying really is that it, those projects can come forward in the future to put bigger shade structures around the playground equipment. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to kind of um, see how we what we can do to put that on the list for sure. Does that need to go through Parks and Rec or can we just talk to you directly about that? Well, it doesn't have to, but it would be better to have them sort of spearhead it and uh, and get them involved throughout the entire process because I'm sure if we do one, they may have preferred we do another one. Um, and why put us in that position? It's better to come through the commission to us. So uh, I, th I think it would make sense to, you know, invite them if they, you know, that it's come up to to submit an application for it and and with the understanding that you know may not be prioritized, but I think it's important to understand all the different projects that are are you know potentially warranted or or wanted so that we can weigh them all together as opposed to just who gets up in front of us first. That makes sense. Yeah, and I, I did attend the Parks and Rec Commission meeting and they've already completed their own commission visioning kind of session where they did their own priorities for the upcoming years, um, prioritizing what kind of projects they want to ask for, for funding and all that kind of stuff. So they've already gone through a process, you know, an open process that was um, available to the public. Um, so they definitely have ideas on, you know, what things should come before other things in their opinion. Um, so they're, they've already have a lot of information to share with you all. Okay, okay great. Yeah, and then the other question I was going to ask um, that's on this list that is also tied to parks is the playground surfacing. Um, <laughs> and so that's the kind of like that rubbery cement that goes underneath playgrounds, right? Um, and, that, and it has already been approved for the parks that need it or... Yeah, so we're working, we're actually, they're under construction right now. Um, I think we finished a few of them. And we recently, just yesterday, got another or a quote from the same contractor to expand the, or to improve Victoria Park, uh, to do the, the resurfacing on Victoria Park. They figured they're here already, and if we could get it approved through the Measure J Commission, um, we could issue them a change order possibly instead of having to go back out and they can do the work. The, and I didn't include it because it was just too late to include in this, but I think the quote right now to do Victoria Park is $222,869. So the resurfacing is ongoing to uh, the other parks, um, but if we wanted to extend to Victoria Park, we could. Uh, if the commission approves it, I could uh, work. A, I think I might have to go to council because it's 200,000, it's above and beyond the uh, city manager's authority. 
um, but uh, we might be able to sneak it in to the December meeting and have that park be uh, resurfaced as well, or playground resurfaced. Got it. Yeah, that'd be great. And Demuth is on that list too? Yeah, or just, just to give you some history, um, the original playground resurfacing project included Demuth Park, Desert Highland Park, and Victoria Park. And then once we got the bid, uh, the bidders, the project out to bid, we found out, um, or once we did the engineering quotes, it was going to be way too expensive to do all three. And then if you remember, we decided to move forward with Demuth and Desert Highland Park. And then you, I think it was either this commission or the Parks Commission said like, don't forget about Victoria. Um, you know, we understand you have a limited budget, but, you know, Victoria should be the next one. So that was kind of the background. So, yeah. And I actually had to come back and ask for more money just to complete the original because the, the quote for coming in very high. Commissioner Craig, you had a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask, when I was the chairman of Parks and Recreation, we did Sunrise Park and we put in that whole playground, including the surfacing. Do um, you remember that, Don? Uh, that, I, I wasn't that here was, when that was done, but I was told the whole history behind that one. Right, and that was 345000 Yeah, for the and the, mater the materials didn't last. That's it, what I wanted to know. It didn't it, last? It, 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 uh, facilities having problems with it and um, it, just the weather that we get out here in the desert, um, it didn't perform as well as we thought it would or the city thought it would. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, a, a, a quick question, if we could just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. A uh, quick question back on the convention center list and without getting into the, the weeds of uh, the project request that will be coming inevitably as we deal with it in the future. But I'm curious, and, and, and Mark, Mark, Commissioner Marshall might have background on this, but I, I was genuinely surprised to see the convention center raising the convention center's hand asking for Measure J funding since it's an organization that at least I perceive it to be substantially serving non-residents and substantially relying on hotel taxes and income coming from non-residents. Has, has Measure J participate, participated in funding things like deferred maintenance projects and capital needs for the convention center? Yeah, I'm here. Mark, you're still on mute. Commissioner Marshall. You're, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Yes, we have. And if I recall right, I think it was dealing with the heating air conditioning that we have helped in the past. If I can just um, add to that too, is that you know there are things which also lead to the downtown revitalization, which also adds um, tax revenue to the city. So I think some of the, the justification is not that Measure J is only community-based projects, but there are things that add to the revitalization of the city. And then something like the convention center is an economic driver. Um, it's a city-owned property that's managed by someone else, but it's an economic driver. So that that is, I think, part of the, and I'm not saying yes or no or anything, I'm saying that's part of the justification of it. And, and it's the same as what the visitor center, what they're looking at is whether that drives people down to downtown to spend. So that's part. Right. And, and Commissioner Robin, can I just add real quick the um, just a reminder that the um, Measure J funds come from a 1% sales tax, right? So if we we're driving a lot of visitors to the city that spend or buy things in the city of Pop Springs, part of their sales. Uh, goes to Measure J. So it does create a, a reasonable nexus that Measure J funds do fund stuff. At oh, the I, 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 yeah. I, I, see the, I see the dotted line. I don't see the straight line. Uh, and I could see a dotted line of Measure J 
underwriting hotel development as a way to generate future growth for the city. Again, I don't want to dwell on it, but it's this is a this is a thought bubble that I've been carrying around since I saw yeah. Joel's memo. Just just to clarify, the convention center is a city property, right, Joel? I, yeah. My understanding is that it is. Yes. It's not a it's not a private institution or anything. No. Just no. We wouldn't consider it if it was. Yeah. Yeah. I never questioned the, you know, whether we should or shouldn't. I, I took it on. I gave them the responsibility to fill out the forms and then brought it to the commission to discuss. Um, so it won't be my my responsibility to, to make the final call. Um, so any other questions on the completed projects? And generally, um, it was just a, a quick list showing what we're what we just did. Um, uh, the big one there is a downtown park. Right. We just hope everybody enjoyed that. It was congratulations. Hi. Hey, Soto. One quick question about the downtown park. I went uh, last weekend, no, Saturday, uh, and I finally took my daughter uh, to the play in the water ball thing, uh, and it took us a long time to realize it's not working right now. It's like. <laughs> My husband and another dad trying to find like a button of something. Um, so I don't know if you could just share an update on that and like how, yeah. the, the how project, people can find out about that. Like what would be the steps to, to know? Well, the project, the, yeah, the park was opened. Uh, project is not 100% complete. We still have a contractor on site. They're still doing work in the building. They're still doing fine tuning to the waterfall. They're and other issues related to the waterfall that needed to be addressed. So we waited until after the parades to shut it, or uh, I think it was Pride after Pride to shut it down to be able to fix it. I went there this morning and it was operational. Um, so, but the misters were down. So it's it's just a piece of, and I'd rather it fail completely today while the contractor's still on the hook and to do it. So that's, I'm, I'm glad it's happening, whatever's happening, so that they can actually fix it and they don't walk away until everything's functioning properly. And we're having training, we're doing the final punch list item. So the project's still ongoing and eventually we'll still be fighting with them for a while because it's not going to be a clean finish to the project, but um, that's behind the scenes. It's good to keep in mind that it is tech, like it's done, but it's not done, right? So, um, right, right. so that's, that's so. Um, so going, moving on, um, page two, I guess. Yeah, page two. Um, uh, we're I mentioned the projects underway: the playground resurfacing, the, the Demuth Park, uh, Desert Highland Park restrooms, the, the 2021 pavement repairs. That that's the six million dollar project that's ongoing right now. The pavilion acoustics, the design of the roundabout, the recreational light field, and the traffic management center, those are all projects that are ongoing right now that we're all actively participating on, my team's working on. Um, so I don't know if anybody has questions on that. Uh, now I'll just sort of move on to, um, and, and sort of, I guess I want to turn it back to Commissioner Bernstein. You, you posed a question. What do you want to, what do you want me to discuss as far as the projects that were presented to the council and then were removed from funding. Do you, do you want me to elaborate? You, you, uh, you can see the, the list of the projects. I can talk about them. Um, many, all these projects have already been presented multiple times to the commission. So I don't know how much more I need to elaborate. I'd rather kind of answer your questions and open it up to the commissioners to see if they have other questions on, on what my thoughts are on these projects or what your questions are on these projects. So, I mean, I'm just going to go. So these 21, 22 um, things, I just have a couple of things. So the pavement rehabilitation, that that has um, not not been approved at all. Is that correct? So I'll talk about it in a different year. So we are working currently on the 20, 20, fiscal year 21, uh, 21, 22 uh, pavement project. The next pavement project is going to be the fiscal year 22. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 22, 23 uh, pavement project. So we're going by fiscal years. This money here that you have, the $3 million, is going to be my next paving project. And if you increase it to $6 million, it'll be, you know, we'll do that much more work out there in the city. Um, and and that's, that's as best as I can describe it. Right now, we do have $6 million under contract. 
um, and the next project, if you only have three million, will be a three million dollar project. And we we kind of wait. We, we're finished with it, and then in between the paving, we do the slurry. We're also working on the slurry project as well. So um, it's almost like continuous projects going on. Once we finish one, we gear up and start the next one. Okay. That was already put into the budget. Was everything else? Most of the things were taken out, but that was left in. I guess that's correct, and that's your right. The three million is there present for us to use next year. Yeah, unless you wanted to add and keep that in for another three million to bring it to six million. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I guess I had one more question for engineering for the Demuth Dog Park, the two hundred thousand dollars. I know the Parks and Rec is wanting to redo the the um, the City Hall one. To what extent does that two hundred thousand dollars alleviate? the problems that they're having there in terms of traffic and at the Bemuth Dog Park. I think this particular the project is actually tied to a grant that the city oh, no. Joe, I can oh. I can answer that question. Oh sorry. <laughs> Talking a little bit more of the package. Yeah. So um the Parks and Rec Commission, of course, you know, if you've been to Demuth Park, the large dog park, it's that big triangular area that kind of looks like a lot of dirt. Um, and um, what the Parks and Rec Commission wanted to do was they understand that there's this larger grant that the city applied for and there was matching funds and it was like $3 million and stuff like that. They wanted to do a smaller project that would like add amenities to the existing dog park, make it a little bit more friendly and inviting. Um, because if you took your dog there, you'd kind of be like, I don't know, you know, but if it looked, if it had like some mulch, if it had a little bit more seating, maybe even a small shade structure or something like that, um, it could attract people to um, stop using or not overuse the current dog park behind City Hall. And maybe they would be open to using the one at Duluth uh, when, um, the other one gets too crowded or if it's closed for uh, reseeding and maintenance. So that was the idea behind the 202,000 was to create a small project because there's a lot of rocks in the dirt. And so what this would do would allow them to like run a screed over the rock and try to remove a lot of the large pebbles in the, in the dirt, maybe add some mulch and some little landscaping areas and just make it a little bit like a, like a facade improvement, I guess, or like a, like a quick judging up of the dog park down there, um, hopefully so that more people would use that dog park and kind of spread the crowd out. So that's so the, I, I, that's that project. Okay, so I wanted to, I guess I'm gonna contradict Don a little bit, or maybe we're, we're because <laughs> um, I went to the actual sheet 2116, um, and what I understood that we are using for the bigger, project, right, the one where we're applying for grant funds, there's, I think we're applying for about $1.6 million in grant funds. There's uh, Quimby funds that were going to be set aside for that project. And then there's also another match that we needed to, to use for that project. And I thought that's what the 202,000 were for, but Don and I will, will sort that out. Um, but I think Don's also correct in that we, we, sh we do have a request to upgrade the, the existing dog park because it is a uh, basically just rocks and dirt, so. Are there other questions on these projects since we have all discussed these before? The rest oh, yeah, I, I can go also a little bit on the history. These are the projects that I presented to the city council with our budget uh, before the beginning of the fiscal year. The projects that made it to the staff report that were uh, ultimately the council decided that we shouldn't move forward until with these projects until they had a, a I guess it really was, I, and I, at least I think it was pro, uh, uh, prompted by the commission wanting to have a joint meeting. And I think that at that time, the council didn't want to move forward with these projects until they met with the commission, but I, I may be a little bit uh, foggy on that memory. But go ahead and ask your questions on these projects. Commissioner Federer, did you have a question? Yeah. Would you explain what the Community Development Block Grant is? Where does it come from? What does it do? Do you get it every year? What? It, how does that work and who funds that? G funds, Community Development Block Grant 
funds are from the state. They're given to, I don't know a lot about it, to be honest, where the money is coming from. I believe the city gets an allocation of CDBG funds to use. You want uh, me to take that, Joe? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, community development block grant comes from the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. So it's like HUD money, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's basically based on um, census tracts. So it can be only spent in census tracts that have a, um, a median income level that's generally pretty low. And so, um, you know, as property values increase, um, a lot of our areas that were in community development block grant eligible census tracts, um, the median incomes have grown too high and then they fall out. So basically these are in lower income areas of any city. And um, basically the allocations are generally based off of a city's population. Um, so that's why, you know, whenever that census comes around, every city tells you fill out the census form, fill out the census form, because that's what determines how much money we get. And then um, that's kind of a broad overview of CDBG money. So Do you get that every year? The city gets an allocation every year. Okay, but it has to be spent on capital projects in designated areas. Yes. And that's run by our um, economic development management. Uh, uh -huh. Jay Verada, his team uh -huh. runs the community development block grant program for the city. And we just build it. We, we build the projects, but they run the program. And so that can change every year. That's not a constant source of income. It is, but you don't know what it always is going you, to be. You know the dollar value. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think we got 420000 this year. Commissioner uh, Soto, did you have a question? John, and am I confusing my history? Didn't the community development block grants come out of kind of like the restructuring or the new regulations when the revitalization grants from the state got all changed up so that they had to be used for certain communities rather than just like any city? No, um, community development block grants have been around for a long time, long before the real development agencies went away. Um, but um, what did change in the kind of past recent years is that um, now you're required to have like a five-year plan of how you spend, how you intend to spend money. So, um, you know, economic development went through this whole process as far as, um, you know, hiring a consultant and um, basically having them advise us as far as to meet all the goals um, that were set out. And then they also got extra money from COVID. Um, so like how to spend that money was a whole process that had to, you know, that they had. Yeah, to it seemed like there was a bigger like equity piece. Um, that yeah, more yeah. On but, but it's been around for a long time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions on this group? I do. Can I ask um, Joel? Would it be easier, or I'm just asking the question, when you said if you get six million instead of three million from us, is it something that if we voted and said, let's give them six million that you can go ahead and start using it? Well, we would take it to council and say that the Measure Day Commission uh, allocated uh, three additional $3 million for paving, uh, just like we did last time. I think the council, that would be sufficient for us to, to move it forward. And that would make it easier for you to get more done? Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And one, one of the things I, I should mention is the, the current $6 million paving project is underway. It's, it's gonna be uh, ongoing for the next three, four or five months. So the $6 million really won't come into play till like next summer when we're getting ready to do the next project. But since we're living in a since we're living no, started time, would it be a good idea for us to vote on it right now? If you, if the commission chooses to do so, yeah, that would just make it easier for me. But I think you should consider it like all the rest of the projects. Uh, I think in the bigger list, that's exactly what I show. I show a $6 million uh, paving project. So 
Yeah, and you said that the public has always been very high on their list has been the paving. Is that right? Correct. Thank you. I've got a, while we're on that subject, I've got a question. Is there kind of, of efficiency of a scale that we can get with the contractors by going from the three to six? Absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah a $6 million project, uh, you will have contractors competing for it and the economy of scale is, is very good. So yes, absolutely. Or is it good for us to move forward quicker since we already have them in place? No, no, I wouldn't add, this is not in the, in the I would not add to the current contractor's uh, project. Is that, that, that would be a separate completely project that we bid out. So no, we wouldn't give this money to the current contractor. So I guess the question is that we're asking, is there any benefit to saying today we are approving six instead of three million for next year, or does it, we might as well just wait until the, we do the whole 21, 22. Yeah, I think you, you, from my perspective, I think you can wait unless somebody comes in and takes out the whole 60 million to do something with it, right? Uh, I think if you're considering projects in the future, if you continue to, to consider signal dollars, uh, then you can wait and do it uh, together with the rest of the projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also I wanna tell the commission, there is a set window weather-wise that we can pave. When it gets too hot, it's just, difficult to do the paving. So um, that's why it kind of has to be planned ahead of time. I mean, but generally what we're doing is if we were to do $3 million next year and then $3 million the year after, we would just combine both of those into one project for the next go around and put that out to bid. And um, So that's why it's such an easy project to do, but it would be for, like Joe said, the next fiscal year. Thank you. Okay, should we move on then if there's no more questions on this initial I, I don't know where to fit this question in, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. I really appreciate the um, descriptions of the titles and the funding. Is there any way to take, because these are in a Word document, any way to just get the, the number, the title, and a summary of all the funding on one page of the project, so we can get a feel of what the cash flow is. We we had those extensive spreadsheets in the past. Actually, when we started with the commission, spreadsheets were very massive, and we can do that. I think if you allow us to, uh, Don's very good at Excel. We can come up, and, and Nancy can actually, with their new software, can probably do some really easy good reports. We can produce something that we come and present to you that would give you just that showing all our projects, funding, expenditures. Um, I think, Nancy, our, our current software is going to allow you to do that, right? Without too much difficulty. I thought he was asking for, for instance, on one page, 1806, let's say on page three, with a little dis a description of what you're going to do. Is that what you were asking for, Mark? Well, I'm asking, uh, you know, we were just talking about the mute, so I still have that one on. So it was like, give me the reference number, 2116, a title, Commute Park, and then show what the funding is uh, when we're doing the funding, 21, 22, 22, 23. But be able to just do a brief description, and then we can refer to these, but I just would like to see what the totals for those years are, so I get a feel of the total cash flow. And He's asking for a spreadsheet that shows the total cash. So I think Don can produce something. Very no, I, I think what he's asking for is the, um, it's pretty much summarized in the five-year CIP, the one-sheeter. You know what I mean? If you were to look at like what the, what the <clears throat> um, like if you go further down in Joe's memo, so like the first. That's not what I'm asking for. <laughs> I really want to see these numbers by year. Draw down. They are by year. So if you look at page three. So page four, yeah. Or page three, you'll see for 2021, he's going to spend, he wants to spend 16 million. And if you look at my spreadsheet, for what you what your balance is, is 17090621. Uh, that's what we get. That's our balance that we can spend as of this year. So Joel took that number and um, came up with page number three 
2021. So you would have to take the 17 million minus the 16, whatever you have left over that's up for grabs. Does that well, make sense? That. Um, I'm actually looking more for what Joel is uh, referenced because that's the way you measure data early, you know, in the past. And it gave you a good uh, feel of where we spent our money on one page. This does not, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it just shows me by a year. Right, I think you really truly, yeah. I'm sure Marshall is really asking for the spreadsheets that we did in the past. And that's what I'm trying to just say that we we can work together with Nancy to do something that's easy to do with our current software and they can produce something. We just don't wanna spend a lot of time because the other spreadsheets took an enormous amount of time to just keep them up to date. I think the old spreadsheet could have been streamlined. I agree with you. Right. So that's what I think we can work together to come up with something um, to, to, that'll show it. And it's we're doing it anyways when we're working with our budgets, with our, our five year CIP. We, we kind of look at each year. We know how many projects we have, the funding available and how what we're spending, uh, at least projecting to spend. So I think we can do something. Yeah. Or when we when we get rolling, we, we can at some point as part of the financial uh, uh, presentation, we should bring to the table how much money we have for a certain fiscal year with certain with the projects, how much we're spending. So we do have to report to the commission. And I think we just need to get control of it and be able to do it in a manner that's understandable. Awesome. Yeah. I think that'd be helpful because then, we, then we're not asking a question, can we do the three million now? Because I really couldn't tell you how much total we've already committed to in 22, 23, 23, 24. I can't tell you that. I have a good idea, Joe. We'll discuss it tomorrow. Um, what I'll do is take your um, your sheet that details out all the projects in the five year plan, just sort it by measure J at the top, I'll put the funding amount, and then we'll have an ending fund balance at the end of each year. Done. Boom. Something, yeah, we can. Perfect. Wait, can, I, can I share something real quick? Can I share my screen real quick? Um, so here's the five year CIP booklet, right? And we show the expenditures. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Oh. So here's the five year booklet, right? Can you see that? Yes, yes. And I tried to display the information in different ways. So this is by fund for each fiscal year. This is what I think you're asking for. And it's right. on the book. And so it has the project, the each yeah. funds, and then each year, how much dollar amount. And then so that goes for all the project. And then here, this is like year one. This is just gas tax, just measure A, all the projects, just measure J. And then, you know, the second year, these are, so you might see the same project in different, like here, it's here, it's here. So it's coming from different funds, but this is by, by fund. So this is all the measure J projects. Um, some of the money is also from capital projects. So I show it in different ways in the booklet, and then we get each project sheet. But I think, Commissioner Marshall, you were kind of more looking for something like this, correct? Yeah, I'll just take that and sort it by measure Jane at the very top, put yeah. what the balance is and the ending balance. Yeah. That would be great. That's, that's the actual, that I had the exact same sheet up on my screen, and I was going to do the same share, but yeah, thanks, Don. That's yeah. pretty but I think, and we can refine it. What I'm saying is, let's not be in a rush to present it right now. I think we, we can do that, that presentation once we have good direction from council projects and, and something to report. Uh, right now, we're still working on the five year CIP, or if you will, a projection of what we would be spending this in these next five years because we still haven't gotten there. So, yeah, I think we can, we can accommodate. We can get a copy of that. That would be great. Yeah, so you will be presented with an updated one, which would be, you know, so that booklet was fiscal year 21, 22 to 25, 26. So we're already starting to prepare 22, 23 to 26, 27. So that's going to be before you to review, um, you know, before the next budget is approved. So, so okay. Uh, we're running out of time. Do we want to go through the projects on page three? Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the 
the exercise on page three was really, uh, I was asked, I think it was by Commissioner Gazan to, at the, at the time we had $16 million, 16.3. He asked me to, to go ahead and look at our five-year CIP. And if I were to bring uh, forward, you know, a bunch of projects that would spend all that money in year one, what would it look like? And that's essentially what the list that I came up with. Right now, I guess the number is like 17 point something million. Uh, here's where I would, you know, increase the budgets, maybe fund one project all in one year. Um, and like you can see 2101, which is the annual payment rehabilitation, that's where I would recommend giving us the, the six million dollars. Um, and uh, we just keep on going, like the main library set aside, you know, 1.2 million. And I have an asterisk indicating that these projects are going to be, be funded in other years as well. So it doesn't get the project actually constructed in, in the first year. It just essentially sets aside some money to, to eventually get to the full funding over the next two or three years, or however it lands in the, in the five-year CIP. Thank you. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And that uh, I don't necessarily think we want to go over the convention center projects. Um, I think the, at the very end, I provided a worksheet where it shows what they want to do. But the descriptions are pretty um, on, I guess, the marquee upgrade, which is an upgrade their marquee, the exhibit hall air, exhibit hall air wall and acoustical tile refurbishes or just the internal acoustic tiles they want to refurbish those, replace carpet, upgrade some landscaping and some lighting. So that's sort of what they want to do. I don't know if, if the commission wants to discuss those in any detail right now, or we wait till a bigger discussion. Yeah, I just I I think we should have a bigger discussion, but I just wanted to add something else to Commissioner Robin. You know, they, they, there is a also a community, direct community line with the convention center. I mean, they've been for the past year and a half, they do a food distribution, they did the the, the Christmas thing, they did, you know, the vac the COVID testing, they administered forty thousand vaccines there. So there are other things which are besides, you know, commercial conventions as well. So. Yep, I, I appreciate that. I understand, uh, and I understand okay. they have a they have a fund they have a funding mechanism as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, if if I could go back just uh, very briefly, a uh, question for Joel or Dom on the Frey Building Rehab 1918, uh, the eight hundred thousand dollars. The description in it is that this is basically a. Uh, call it a temp temporary relocation for conference room facilities from the main library. Is that, am I describing it correctly? I think it's for storage. So we can uh, use storage that's in the current library for conference. So yes, I there, understood. there's a storage room in the existing library that the library um, board of trustees wanted to convert into like community meeting space. And so if we were to take out that equipment, it would have to go somewhere or everything stored in there. There were like archival machines and, and some mm -hmm. documents and stuff. So if we were to fix the JC Frey building, um, that stuff that was in that room can move over there. And then that space would be opened up for programming. And there, not to be, we don't, we don't have to solve this today, but maybe this con this is a conversation that's already occurred among you or others. There isn't a better way to solve this than eight hundred thousand dollars to move storage to one from one location to another, and then backfill and retrofit to create oh. meeting space. Oh, and there, for, were, there were, I mean, the the free building, you know, has been is currently being used for by the friends of the library they do a they used to do a book sale when mm -hmm. before covid and um uh, and then basically there's no restrooms in that building there's the kitchen is just um in shambles and then basically it, it, it's in it's a, it's in need of repair uh -huh. some good tlc so that 800 000, or that 580,000 was uh, to do all the TLC that makes it a usable building open to the public. Um, so it, it does kind of do more than. As, as a permanent fix or a temporary fix? Yeah, so the, the HVAC, 
the usable restrooms and installing fire sprinklers and fire alarms. Yeah. Those are permanent fixes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know a bit about this. Is that not a historical site building? Do you know? Yeah, we, we looked into the historic, it was a historic class four. Yeah. And everything that's being proposed um, is allowed. Yeah. yeah, and I think that building is highly, highly important to the library because that is where they do their annual book sale. And in the back room is filled with the books that we receive to sell to the public, which is a big, big fundraiser for the library. And I think if I'm right, a water pipe broke in there. So that caused a big problem. And that was not repaired. So therefore the toilets and the wash basins were not repaired. The plan that I think the library has is if and when there is a plan to either remodel the building, part of the business could be handled from the Fry building. They're not going to move all the stuff over there and store it. That is an active building where um, I think the library has submitted a project in the main library to improve a meeting room. I, I, I haven't seen the plans, but we have discussed that with Jeannie. But the Fry building is important. Um, it's really an adjunct to the services of the library. So I think it's an important historical project. And because of plumbing and being an old building, it used to be the JC's building actually uh, had it. So I, I really would like to see that stay in comparison to a lot of money that's spent in other places. I think the library should have that money and have that done. Can I suggest that we have about 10 minutes before we get to uh, board uh, commission comments? So, <clears throat> I mean, at this point, we're just getting the update and the review and answering questions from, from Joel and, and Don. So why don't we move forward with the projects there? And then I guess the next meeting, we can start prioritizing. We have to wait till then. Mm -hmm. Joel? Yeah, so I, I have uh, not much more to add to the memo. Um, I think um, the, the list of 16 projects was just me playing with the numbers to try to get to the 16, 17 million. Um, and it, it really doesn't really reflect what we, you know, what the commission might do in the future once we have full discussions. It's just okay. a quick exercise on my part. I think Don mentioned it was the JC Friday had a, 580 in the in in our in our worksheets. I think I increased it to 800,000 just because of the nature of every project we touched at the city. Um, as soon as we touch it, it, it opens up a can of worms. So I bumped it up to 800,000. So that's all it was. It was me playing with numbers to try to get to the 60 million. What I would do if I were allowed to just fund the projects the way I see fit. So um, completely <laughs> up to discussion and, and change as as the commission sees fit. So that's pretty much all I have. Um, okay. Well, then, are there more questions? Additional yeah. questions. Do we want to have discussion on this on this list? Or do we want to wait. Hold off. Hold off. Okay. I think we, we have the benefit of time, and as as we're having this conversation, and the the, the that thought, the idea uh, that uh, six, Commissioner Craig raised of should we proceed now with the six million for. Uh, doubling down on annual pavement. Uh, it seems like there's a, there are a lot of good ideas here and we're probably going to have to say no to some good ideas. And if we have the opportunity to say no at the same time that we say yes, it might be a more complete conversation. And I think we have the benefit of time to do that. Okay. okay. Well, did you have something on your, um, I thought I saw something for January. What was that going to council for? So the, the city manager has a, uh, a running list. I think he presented it to the commission of all the council meetings and what he projects might be on those council meetings. In January, he projected to have the five-year CIP discussion. Um, I think it was based on council's um, discussion during the approval of the budget that they didn't have sufficient time to actually look at the five-year CIP. So it was almost a reintroduction of the five-year CIP. Um, but I think I suspect that 
the city manager may want to have full buy-in from the Measure J Commission before we bring the five years back. So I'm wondering if we need to review this more deeply to make decisions before uh, sometime in December, um, if we're bringing it in January. Yeah. Yeah. So we think in Jan in December we can have a, a bigger discussion. Um, but I suspect that that, that uh, five-year CIP may be bumped to another date, maybe not January, maybe in February. Um, I think we do need to let the, this commission really vet all the projects and then give their opinion for which projects they want to bring forward. And if we have that joint meeting maybe in February or uh, the, the discussion on the CIP in February, that would uh, assist. I think that would make it easier. Okay. So we'll go over the in-depth, the five-year CIP at, at the next at the December meeting, is that correct? I would say that, 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 I mean, it's going to be basically the same list that you, you've seen already, and it's the same list you're looking at right now, but yeah. Okay, so. Maybe, maybe one recommendation can be if there's any questions or concerns or, you know, anything specific about these project projects um, that we're looking at right now, maybe we can send it to Joel and his team before the December meeting. So that way we have that information already um, at our disposal. Um, so that's kind of like a to-do list for us. I think that's an excellent, I, I would recommend if there are questions specific that we can direct it to Joel you know, beforehand and, and, and maybe you can um, uh, coordinate them and, and what is easy enough to answer could have, we could have before the meeting. If not, if it's, I don't wanna create double work, but, and, and if it's not easy, we could go, um, we could then have more full discussion at the meeting, but that way. Is that okay, Joel? I just realized I like assigned something to you. <laughs> no, that's fine. Actually, I, I would encourage any questions I had to schedule that way I can prepare them and, and talk about. Them. I, I think the idea is that we would want to move, you know, if, if considering how we have this year and next year to all happen in, in five months, basically, that the idea with city council, if we could do it, be more um, efficient in, in our use of time and the meeting time, limited time we have together, that might be more productive. So I think that's an excellent idea. And then are we also going to go over the community projects at that December meeting also? Hopefully. If will we have that ahead of time, it's December 9th is when the 7th is the deadline? The 2nd. 2nd. And when's our December meeting, uh, Evelyn? December 16th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, December 16th. Yeah. So I'm going to ask that there is much review ahead of the meeting and questions before that, so we can that that could be answered, so that we can use it efficiently. Because I, I, it would be ideal if we're asking City Council, you know, that we really want to meet. That when we if we do meet, we're fully prepared. Okay. Now, a, a, a question on the community projects, the, the, I'll call it the balloting. When the balloting is coming in, uh, is, uh, I'm not sure what my, I'm not, I don't have an expectation of whether we're getting information, homework, if we will, to prepare for the next meeting and we're individually receiving our scorecards to individually score projects, or if we're doing that live together at the meeting. An answer, Commissioner Soto. Um, I think. Um, sorry, hold on. I'm trying to. I can't find you. That. <laughs> um, and I don't object to. I don't. I don't object to homework. <laughs> my impression that that was to be determined. I think once the replies, all the responses came back, and we had a better idea of like the volume and how mm -hmm. many were were viable and things like that. Um, so I think. I think that could be decided on in the December yeah. meeting. How many well, applications? Well, at our last at our last session it was right. I think 14 proposals right. had been submitted. So we have as of today we have a total of 18 yeah. submittals. Mm -hmm. We received three submittals um after our last special meeting of October 20th. Um and they most of the submittals are through Google Forms. Uh, as mentioned at the other meeting, we have only two submittals that were submitted separately from the Google Forms. Um, and I can have, I've made it so that that information is easily um, 
readable and understood. Um, so I can have all that information to you even by December 3rd after the deadline for oh, review, yeah, but yeah. Um, it's up to the commission how they want to review and if they wanted to meet and discuss those on the 16th of December. Yeah, maybe we kind of review the responses and then we decide the scores, scoring system based yeah. on that. Yeah, uh, I would. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah, and the only thing is if that, you know, if there are things that we don't know about the funding and what it would cost mm -hmm. that we can, if we can get some input from Joel and Don or if they have it beforehand or a rough thing, just so we're understanding if somebody has requested something and doesn't really know what it will cost. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if we can do, uh, do the homework beforehand and we can see that, you know, as soon as possible, then we can be fully prepared on the 16th. Mm -hmm. I think you have time. We don't, money's not going to go out the door at the end of December. And we have a lot to do right here. And maybe when we get all the applications in, we can make a decision. But to sit through a meeting and do that without us having done something on our own would be forever, forever. Well, and, don't we take those, Linda? I think, Joel, that we have to take those to the council also, regardless. So I thought if we take them, we'll take everything at one time. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. up to you, but and I thought it was my understanding that uh, two subcommittee members were going to get together, review them together before we even presented them to okay. the whole commission. Is that correct? I mean, we, we discussed that as an option. I don't think we ever confirmed one way or the other which way we were going to go. No. Um, I, I don't anticipate the community initiated projects to be decided by January to present to council. Um, I agree. That, that I don't think is... Because especially if we're inviting people to present and so forth, yeah. we might, I don't know, that's also. I, I think it would be ideal if we had them, um, you know, there were, if it, if it, I think one of the concerns is that we we're going to have hundreds of them. If we have a couple dozen, I think the whole council, the whole commission rather, can, we, it would be interesting to see them. And we can then, you know, figure out the scoring and go from there. But mm -hmm. unless 100 or 200 start coming in, then I would, I think most people would want to see them. But you still need time to read them and to digest them and to score them. And to me, that would be an individual process for me first, and then a discussion as a, a group that some are going to be thrown away immediately because they don't meet criteria, and then to really deal with the ones that are important. And that's where we each have to decide, you know, what how we score them. So okay. that is, a little bit. also just said for, you know, raised a good point. If we're getting them on the third, at least whether it's a subcommittee or other people could follow up if there are specific questions beforehand. Um, and then we can determine if they need to, to um, submit to the whole, to the whole. Um, yeah. Eliminate adventure. really what is um, eliminatable, first of yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. So I think that way, if you know, some of them may not know the cost. As everyone says, they may not know the cost. So if you're gonna, if we can get some more details from them without committing or making any decisions, it will help. It would help the process because otherwise, it's gonna come to the whole group, and we're gonna say, let's go ask them these questions. Yeah, I would say. I mean, it's more of like, hey, you you have information missing from your application. We're gonna start reviewing on December sixteenth. Yeah. You know, you want to answer these two questions. Um, less kind of like vetting of like looking in detail, but just making sure they're complete. Exactly. Um, I do think it's gonna be possible to do it as a group. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we only have about five minutes left. I think we should move, I know there was some board comment, uh, commission comments. And so we, if everyone's okay, we'll move on to the next to that. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Craig? I'm just gonna, uh... I will be brief. I had uh, I had a few things that I wanted to ask about. I, I had a few people from um, 1PS had approached me to ask me, and I wanted to just ask Joel and Don to look into this for us for the future, asking me about the wooden bridge, which is uh, over near Farrell, uh, the crosses. There have been people that have said they have concerns on that wooden bridge that runs next to the highway how safe it is right now. And I didn't have answers. And I said, I would ask for it to be looked into or if this was something that Measure J should be involved in, in in this bridge or the repair of it, or if there's a problem. So I'm just asking 
if that's something that could be checked. I also wanted to thank Nancy because when I met with her and we got together and we found the Measure J signs and they were all put up inside the park, I was glad to see that at the Pride Festival, they were still all up and people were reacting to it and seeing them. Uh, at, the, uh, at the event that we had, the ribbon cutting, they were passing out um, fan things with a picture of, of Nellie Kaufman on it, telling people about considering naming the park. And I just took that one, but I took this and I made that I think for the future, we need to have these that we pass out at every event that we do. I just think it's another piece of psychologically getting our name out. I brought up uh, two years ago and it was voted down by the commission, but I'm relentless. So I'm gonna bring it up again. I'll bring a picture at the next one of the idea of the flags that are 12 feet tall, that'll say measure J on it to consider every time they're fixing a road or doing something to consider putting something like that up. I just think we need the exposure once again to get our name out there for people to see measure J out there. Um, and um, I just wanted to thank um, Jeffrey, uh, the way he ran the uh, ribbon cutting for the event mm -hmm. at the park. I think it was really exciting. And when I was leaving to go to my car and the ABBA group was playing and the people all sitting on the lawn, people really enjoyed the park. It was really something that turned out to be, I, I think, pretty exciting. It was different than some of us thought it should be. Uh, and I'm not going to be, and I told you so, but I was bitching two years ago about the water treatment when we had um, uh, Councilman Coors and Councilman Holstage wanting to do that water park. Joel was, I think, was there. Uh, I know that a few other people were there. I still have concern that this water treatment is gonna have a problem for us in years to come and the cost that it's gonna be, my opinion. Thank you. Okay. So we have a minute left and I just wanted to ask three questions. Oh, I use four minutes then, I'm sorry. That's okay. So <laughs> is everyone okay if uh, in writing a letter to city council requesting that, you know, the, urgent, the urgency of having a joint meeting as soon as possible and to get policy direction? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something Justin's working on this weekend. And I think that the, all the council members are aware of it, and it's basically for all commissions. So I would hold off until see what happens at this um, after so, this weekend. We'll know a heck of a lot more. Well, my next part of that is I don't. We don't have any schedule of when we'll actually know anything. So I. I I understand this, and I and I and I will reference that we understand they're having the visioning session, but. I, I would prefer that we are more assertive in saying we need to get policy direction and a meeting scheduled because it's clearly very hard to schedule meetings with city council. Mm -hmm. with well, I think board. Joel has it on January, February, and I, I would wait until we have that five-year ready plan ready to go before we say, okay, we want to have a meeting now. And then they're like, okay, well, let's do it the second meeting in December. We don't have it. We're not even ready yet. What are your thoughts on that, Jeff? I think we should find, I mean, if it's going to happen in December, I think it might be too soon, but if there's something going to happen next year, my concern is that this, we were supposed to have our joint meeting in May and then September, and now we have no, we don't have any date that we've been given yet. And that's what they're going to set up, I think, work on this weekend. So I, I would like to urge them to ensure that that happens. Is there, that's, that is my thing. And I understand that they're planning to do it, but We've been raising these issues for quite some time, and 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 I don't want to be, um, I, I don't want to be problematic, but I want to be let them know because we haven't spoken to all of the commission to council that we think is important. I think it's important to be assertive on this, and I understand the comments, but I would say maybe go ahead and do the letter saying no later than February. So at least yeah. we give them a timely line to work with. Yeah, I know. I, and, I, and I think it would be, and, and, I, and if it's okay, I'll write it. Am, am I, can I copy the commission on it or I send it to Evelyn and she distributes it? Or you can BCC. Okay, so if everyone's okay, I will do that. And if everyone's okay, I will also suggest that to the city manager that we include a, 
a line item in our budget for marketing and or PR that, that is within his approval range. So that um, that would be easier. Commissioner Futter? I just wanted to say that I think um, the opening of the downtown park was really magical. Everybody seemed to have a wonderful, wonderful time. And I was disappointed. Um, there were lots of compliments made for everybody, but I think our two engineers from the city should have been had a little shout out too. And I've communicated that to Joe. Um, you know, some guy with a shovel got a shout out. And um, I do hope if the naming ceremony comes, if you're going to do depictions of um, Nellie Kaufman, that they are really good pictures from historical and not her head on a, um, on a stick. Um, I, I was somewhat bothered by that, to be quite honest with you. That was the Preservation Foundation did that, that was, but yeah. Her great great grandchild was not particularly excited about that. I, I have to be very honest with you. But it was a wonderful night, and Jeffrey really said complimentary things. And Joelle went and put a major J sign in front of the sunrise bathroom. And he said, It will be how long do you think it's going to be there? And it's four weeks now, I think. And when I go to yoga, I go by there to see what's happening. It's still standing. So I'm so proud of those bathrooms. <laughs> Thank okay. you guys for all the hard work you're doing. Jeff, My only really question talk. is if you're going to submit something to city council for December on the on the playground surfacing that you send mm -hmm. it out to the commission ahead of time. So one of the things that I didn't hear is if the commission actually uh, voted to allow me to move forward with that change order of $222,000 and 869 cents. If the commission I, does that, I can put a, a staff report together and we'll send it out to you. I move we do that. Second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, We're now have, at 704. I just do have we, one quick thing. Um, you had uh, $20,000 carried over from last year for um, communication and marketing. And I think I carried it over again this year. So I'll let you know at the next meeting. Thank you. So there's 20,000, I believe, sitting in there. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Need a vendor now. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Do we have a, it is 7.04. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Soto and the Futterer. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a happy holiday. Bye.